Now, last night we heard the dream that, uh, and this all actually all ties together, we heard the dream that Clay Nash had with Dutch in the dream. And in this dream, um, at the very end, uh, um, prayer guy, Reese Howell, thank you, <laughs> um, gave Dutch a mantle and gave him a scroll. And the, and the seal was to be broken in October. And the words were going to inspire power and awe. And I saw last night, as he said that, I saw the Lord break open that seal. And I saw the scrolls being unfurled. And what I heard the Lord say is that what was written on the scrolls goes back over 400 years and it really comes out of the, the foundational prayers which actually have embedded within them the prophecies of our founders. See, these men didn't have a grid for prophecy. So when they would hear God say something, then they would pray it out. And so a lot of those foundational prayers actually contain the word of the Lord for our nation. And as the scrolls were being un, un, uh, un, unrolled, it said that they were activated and released. And I believe that there are prophecies that were written even 400 and more years ago that were reserved for this time and for this hour and that there is an angel army that is also reserved for this time and for this hour to carry those things out just as an illustration of how a prophecy can be reserved for a time god said to abraham he said in you all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed how many know that they were prophesying to the day that jesus would come and give his life on a cross not just for the jewish people but for that people of every tongue tribe and nation could come and be in relationship with god amen it was for a time and for a purpose and i believe many of the things Things that were written then are for now it's very interesting because last night when I prophesied I prophesied about the journals of Columbus things written in the journals of Columbus I, I obviously have not had time to read the journals of Columbus since last night but I went and I looked them up and you know what they're called <laughs> they are called <laughs> they are called the uh, the book of prophecies The book of prophecies. And just the little that I read, do you realize, let me just read you this. He said, he said this. He said, and this is Columbus Day weekend. How many know that there's been a very strong concerted effort to, dis, to discredit Columbus? Okay, there was a lot of things that went wrong, but that wasn't Columbus's fault. I'll tell you, Columbus had a word from God. Listen to how he relates this journey. He said, at this time I have seen and put into study to look into all the scriptures which the Lord has opened to my understanding. It was the Lord who put it into my mind. I could feel his hand upon me, the very fact that it would be possible for me to sail from here to the Indies. All who heard of my project rejected it with laughter ridiculing me there is no question that the inspiration was from the Holy Spirit because he comforted me with rays of marvelous inspiration from the Holy Scriptures this was a fire that burned within me who can doubt that this fire was not merely mine but also of the Holy Spirit I am a most unworthy sinner and I've cried out to the Lord for grace and mercy and they've covered me completely and then he goes down and he said for the execution of the journey to the Indies I did not make use of intelligence mathematics or maps it is simply the fulfillment of what Isaiah had prophesied and I believe he begins to prophesy listen to what he says listen to me O coastlands and hearken you people from afar He's not just prophesying to the land then, he's prophesying to us here today. The Lord called me from my womb, from the body of my mother. He named me by name. You know who else said that? Cyrus. 
And he said to the coastlands, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Come on, a foundational prophecy over the destiny of the land of America and everybody that came along, Robert Hunt and the Huguenots. Do you know the Huguenots were spirit-filled, tongues talking, dreams and vision prophesying French people that got kicked out of their country and where did they come? To America. I have to believe that some of those early Huguenots were praying in tongues on our soil before the rest of the church world ever even heard of it. Robert Hunt. We heard Dutch read the first half of his prayer last night. Let me read you the second half. He said this. He said, Almighty and merciful God, let us never stray from the commission to which you've called us to bring the inhabitants of this land to the knowledge of thy kingdom. Help us to be bearers of thy truth to those who sorely need to receive it. Hasten the day, O God, when the knowledge of thy son shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And if a day should come when we would fall in our calling, he's prophesying to today. He said, you will stir up our children after us to bestow upon them that blessed land. We activate this, prop this prophecy tonight. Let us add our might to the treasury of heaven. Use us, O God, weak instruments as we are for the building up of thy kingdom, which shall be gathered from all the corners of the earth. And it goes on. The Mayflower Compact. We're getting ready to have the 400-year anniversary next month of the Mayflower Compact. George Washington, his inauguration, his prayer at Valley Forge throughout the early founding of our nation. Prayer after prayer, let me say, was also prophecy after prophecy over the this land, when Robert Hunt said that this land would be a land of evangelists that would send the, the gospel to the nations of the earth, I am telling you, he was not just seeing that day then, he was seeing today. And we are reactivating the destiny of America to be a light on a hill, not to be a place that, that, uh, that uh, exports abortion and pornography and all the evil. We are rising up in our destiny and we are activating those things that were spoken for hundred years ago, 300 years ago, 200 years ago. Why? Because they're written on the scrolls in heaven and God is saying, now is the time of execution of those words. Now, if you don't mind, stand to your feet with me. And I'd like the prophetic team that we've designated to come up here. Towards the end of last year, I started speaking about something that I, I had heard somebody over in Europe talk about. After World War I, there was a place called Flanders Field. How many have ever seen pictures of Flanders Field? Flanders Field was a very brutal battlefield. A brutal battlefield. Blood, lives lost, Soldiers' boots marching on that battlefield. But you know what happened, strangely, and has happened ever since, is that after the war, that field burst into a super bloom of flowers. Because the boots of the soldiers and the tanks and the armies marching across that land, stirred up and activated something that was in the soil. Seeds that had been buried, seeds that had been dormant, some of them laying there for 10 years, 15 years. But suddenly, the activation of the boots caused those dead dormant seeds to come to life. And it resulted in a super bloom of flowers that continues to this day. I want you to understand something. God is giving us a sign. The last three out of four years, let me tell you, the deserts of California have a super bloom only every 15 years. 
The seeds blow across the desert. They go down into the ground. They seemingly die, but they're not dead. They're dormant. Just like these prophecies. Just like the prayers of our founding fathers. And so what happened in California that the last three out of four years have been super bloom years in the deserts of California? Let me tell you something. I prophesied in 2019 that God was going to send another Jesus movement into California. Come on, into the place where Azusa came. Into the place where the Jesus movement came. That God would send another Jesus movement. And guess what? In July of 2020, a new Jesus movement began to spring up. And a super bloom of revival is happening in California. This year in Israel, for the first time in recorded history, first time ever, the hills around the Dead Sea experienced a super bloom. You know what it takes to have a super bloom? Some kind of agitation of the land. How many would say America's been agitated this year? How many think there's been some bloodshed? How many think that there's been some shaking? How many think there's been some things that have been uncomfortable? Come on, just begin to move your feet and begin to agitate the soil. Because we're, what we're going to do is we're going to begin to speak. And we're going to begin to prophesy to the seeds of prophecy. It actually says when they prophesied to the dry bones, the next thing he said is prophesy to the breath. That literally translates prophesy to the prophecies. Prophesy to the prophecies. Can you hear it? Come on, let me hear your feet. We're going to prophesy to the prophecies. Some of you right where you are, you know things that have been prayed by founding fathers. You know what God has said over this nation. You know what God has declared over this land. Tonight we are going to prophesy. Because when it says prophesy to the breath. Come on, God's already prophesied to the bones. We've already seen bones come together. Because look at this room right here. Hallelujah. But tonight we're going to prophesy to the breath. We're going to prophesy to the ruach. Which literally means the prophetic word. It means warlike energy. It means apostolic governmental anointing to rule. Come on. God is saying there is an ecclesia that is waking up and rising up in this day. An exceeding great army and a great super bloom is coming forth out of the dirt of this land. Out of the shaking in this land. The Lord says, my people are arising and the ancient words are suddenly coming to pass and you are breaking through into a whole new day, not of survival. You're not warring to survive. You are warring to possess, says the spirit of the Lord.